Hey, robot makers, hope you're having a good day so far. So do you want to know how to make your own wearable Raspberry Pi wrist-mounted console in the Pip-Boy um, style from the game Fallout? Then this is the show for you. So let's dive straight in. My name's Kevin. Come with me as we build robots, bring them to life with code, and have a whole load of fun along the way. Okay, let's get over to our keynote, and we can make a start. So yes, this is all about our um, Pip-Boy. Oops, why is that not gone over to there? Let me just back up a second. That should be. Just bear with me a second. Why is that not going over to my correct screen? Let me try that again. So screen share. And if I move to my next slide, that's a good start, isn't it? There we go. And that's not showing the screen. What's going on? I think I know what that is. That is. I think I had the screen, just bear with me a sec, I think I had the screen locked um, and I've put some kind of overlay on there and it's now on every single screen which is not what I want. So let me just try that again. If I go to that scene there, um, where is the showing background? Oh, that's frustrating. Why is that on there? Okay. Let me try this instead. This is a good start. Let me just create a new scene and then we will just add to it a overlay, which is that one. There we go. And then let's just make that full screen. Uh, let me see what on earth has, ha has happened to my screen share. <laughs> what are people oh, saying? What did he say? Emergency hammer. <laughs> emergency hammer. Richard, that's exactly what we need, an emergency hammer. Oh my goodness, this looks terrible. Right, let me just get rid of that. Um, let me zoom into the app window. And let's, let's get rid of those horrible rounded corners on there as well. Boom. <laughs> uh, and then actually, if we click on that one there, primary display, and we do keynote. There we go, that's nearly there. Oh no, there we go, it's, it's back. It's back, there we go, get rid of that. Right, and there I'm in the corner. So let's me move me over here. <laughs> I can be that kind of rectangular shape today. I'm not sure what's going on with that. Normally I press the button on here and it just takes me straight into my, my um, uh, screen share button. So I don't know what's going on there. <laughs> Often, anyway, so today's session goals. So today we're gonna to design a wearable Raspberry Pi or PIP Pip, Pi Pit Boy computer. Uh, I'll tell you about the inspiration and why I've come up with this. Um, I'm also going to tell you about how the design challenges that I've had with this uh, and how I've solved some of those, some of those solutions. Solve some of those solutions. <laughs> the, the 3D printable parts that you can download once I've uploaded the article and some of the electronics that I've used in as well. So if you want to get the exact same electronics, you can do that too. And then we'll have a bit of a play with it as well. It's just charging up as we speak because I forgot like an idiot to charge the batteries before the show. Okay, so if I just go back over here. There we go. So inspiration and purpose. Let me see if I can get that to... Oh, come on. Why? What did I do to deserve this not working? And I, I need to find out what's going on there. Right, if I get rid of that... There we go. There Perfect. Two microphones on. There, was, there was two microphones on, there's not now. <laughs> it's now fixed. I was clearly in the wrong scene when I added that overlay. You can have like different overlays in uh, Ecamm, which is the software I'm using. I clearly made a bit of a mess just before the show. Anyway, normal. <laughs> So inspiration and purpose, Why? what is this and why did I make it? So the purpose of this is I wanted a wrist mounted computer terminal so that when I go to the Makers Fair in um, the Makers Central uh, in May, um, I'm gonna be wearing Bubo on my shoulder. And Bubo is a headless Raspberry Pi 4, headless meaning it hasn't got a keyboard or monitor attached. And if I need to be able to sort of run some scripts or restart something or anything like that, rather than just turning on and off again, um, I'd like to be able to some kind of wrist mounted terminal where I can do that. Plus it'd look quite cool to have this too. So that's the reason why. Um, and it's a fun project to do. It's something I wanted to have um, and it's wearable tech. I want to get into more wearable technology. So uh, obviously the inspiration for this is the Pip-Boy from um, from the game Fallout. Is it Fallout 4 or is it in all the Fallouts? I think it's 
think it's an all of them. That'd be all of them. Um, but yeah, it, and, and it's essentially like a little console you wear in your arm to get the user interface so you can save your game and look at uh, inventory and stuff like that. But uh, this is more, I've got a terminal on, on me that's a Raspberry Pi that's running the full Unix stack and we can do all the cool things with it. Okay, so let's get over to there. So design-wise, um, so yeah, I had some challenges with uh, getting this together. It's quite a challenging thing to design because um, there's quite tight tolerances between everything. And I wanted to have things um, sort of at an angle. So I wanted the screen sort of on this part of my wrist. And I wanted to set a keyboard, which I hadn't even purchased when I started designing this, um, kind of at an angle to that, uh, similar to what you can see on the screen. That's version one. So version one, I have in my hands here and there was a, a bit of a design flaw with this so I got my calipers when I was designing this let me go over to here for a second and I measured my arm I was like right so I can my arm can go in about 60 60 um, centimeters so I designed a tube that was 60 centimeters in diameter the only problem with that is I also have a hand which it needs at least 85 millimeters to uh, to fit through so this is a really nice print and everything really solid um, but yeah I couldn't actually get my hand through there there's a few other things I wanted to change as well on this design but um, yeah that was a bit frustrating that was a 20 hour print um, so that's version one Let's get back over to there. Um, so I had to obviously widen. Now, because it, the, I designed things in Fusion 360 with a parametric, so I can measure, I can um, have a, a measurement such as the 60 millimeters. I can simply go in there and change that to 85, and it's not too much cleanup uh, for everything else to fit around that once you update that. So it's nice and simple to make these kinds of modifications. Um, so the, the challenge was I measured something. I hadn't measured everything, so I should have realized that this is a lot wider than that bit there. Uh, and also, I only measured the thinnest part of my arm, not the sort of thicker part over here. So that's obviously a bit thicker. So I did measure things properly with my calipers. Um, once I'd got, uh, that, once I'd printed the entire thing out. So, and then when I printed the second um, um, version of this, I did it in two halves. So I had like a back piece and a front piece, just so I could put it on both printers at the same time and have this printer hopefully in half the time, so 10 hours. Uh, so it did print in 10 hours. However, um, there was a bit of an issue with one of the prints, it actually failed. So you can see there on the right hand side, it, I printed it kind of like a an N shape, if you like. So it was the, the circular arc um, that way round. So the thinnest parts um, of the structure were sort of being printed. And then there's this great big block of um, support material in the middle. And when I came to this, because it was kind of an overnight print, both of the sides had fallen away. And then there was this just big ugly print with um, spaghetti stuff everywhere. So... Uh, I decided to flip this round and have it sort of a U orientation or sort of an upside down C rather than that way around. And that printed perfectly. I had a lot more, I had a lot less support and it was a lot stronger in the orientation than it was. So they're just two things to think about when you're designing and printing stuff. Orientation can make, can make a lot of difference between print times. And think about if you're printing like a table upside down. Um, you've got a nice flat piece and then you've got some legs. If you printed that that way around on your 3D printer, it would have to print all the support all the way up to the bottom of the table underneath and it would take a lot longer and use a lot more support. So this is the final design I uh, I decided upon. So you can see that I've got the, the little keyboard. So um, I have a USB. I'll just try and grab it and show you. I've got a little USB um, Bluetooth keyboard. It's currently sort of wedged into the um, the the mounting plate for it there is no glue applied at all it's just a friction fit and you can usually achieve that by measuring it and printing to that exact distance uh, so things just push in and stay where they need to be so i've got this lovely little mini bluetooth keyboard i'll show you where uh, i got that one from in a slide in a minute the display that i'm using is this um, hyperpixel 4 display from pimroni now this is, I bought this um, when they very first came out. I think there's actually a little bit of a fault with this one. Um, we'll have a look at this. We'll have a play when, uh, when I switch this on, but I actually have another um, display over there. I don't mind this looking slightly faulty because I think it adds to the authenticity of the Pip-Boy. It kind of looks like an old fashioned TV screen. Um, and we'll have a look at that. Um, obviously this design is wearable, so you can put your arm through the hole. It can be, um, you basically just put it on like a tube. Uh, and one of the things I designed when I did the uh, RGB LED dog coat for Archie, uh, we bought some foam that goes on the inside. Uh, so I'm going to do the same thing on that one, put some foam on the inside, and that'll just make it sort of grip to my arm a bit better and also be a bit more comfortable if I'm wearing this for sort of long periods of time. 
Uh, there's also a Pico and breadboard option. You can see that on the left there, there's a little mini breadboard and a little Raspberry Pi Pico, and that can be powered from the, the battery module as well. Um, so you can do experiments on the go. <laughs> I might have to redesign this slightly and we'll get to that uh, a bit later on. Uh, well, that's just like a fun thing to add to this. And it's powered by two 18650, why is that popped up? Uh, two 18650 batteries, uh, which are the same kind of like uh, e-vape batteries or um, the kind of batteries that uh, power torches and all kinds of stuff nowadays. Cars, I think my electric car has a whole bunch of them in there. And this means that the Raspberry Pi Pico and the Raspberry Pi Zero can run for quite a long time, at least an hour. Uh, I just hadn't tried this up, I should have thought of that earlier. Uh, and the CPU is a Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. So currently, I'm actually, I've got the um, Raspberry Pi 2, I think that is, running in here, not the 2W. So it's got the, it's got the Wi-Fi and it doesn't have the faster processor in this particular one, but I can swap that one out. It's very, very easy to do. It's just a couple of screws to mount that there. Okay. Let me move over to there. that. That's going on. Let me just uh, move that out of the way. There we go. So the parts, the 3D printable parts, and I will um, post a link to this uh, in the description and on social media once I've written up the article with all the parts in it, but they are ready to, uh, to go. So let's start off with the, the main body. So you can see there we have a little sort of shelf in the middle. That's for the Raspberry Pi Zero. Uh, and then just underneath that, you might be able to see that there's a just here, if I point with my mouse, that is where the, the battery module um, screws into. So all these screws on here, apart from the Raspberry Pi, are M3 screws, so three millimeter holes. Uh, the Raspberry Pi uses the 2.75, no, 2.5 millimeter. Um, so M2.5 um, machine screws, um, and then yeah, that's the that's the where that where, where they all sort of connect to. You'll see a little hole in the back there. That's just because the the charger module that I'm using has a little um, block that sits out there. I think it's like a, a regulator. So um, that sort of slightly pushes into the design there. And there's also a hole on the right hand side. So that's the design there the hole for the cutout uh, and this other cutout over here is for the cables to go in so you can plug in like a, a USB cable um, if you want to you know use a keyboard and mouse on your Raspberry Pi which is I'm, what I'm currently doing and you can also see that these so, so this is re like a regular circle shape this is just half of it and over here there is at the top uh, the inkling of a design and that's just the way that uh, when I sliced it you can see a little piece remains there and that's where the frame will mount onto the top so that's the first part. So that holds all the main components together, provides access to power. Um, it's split into a number of parts to make the printing easier and quicker. And it also means if I want to redesign a piece like the frame, um, I only have to design that one piece. I don't have to reprint everything else. And it makes it easier to replace and improve parts uh, one bit at a time. So the next piece is the frame. You might just notice the, the frame has just popped onto the screen there. So this piece um, uh, goes over the top of the screen gives it that kind of classic pip boy look looks a bit like a crt kind of design or like the youtube um so it's got like a slightly rounded edge rather than being sort of flat uh, the next piece is the uh, the back sleeve or the sleeve back this uh, again attaches by four uh, m3 screws so all the screws like i said are used in this are nice and simple i had a whole bunch of m3 screws lots of different lengths uh, and these these screw in nicely into 3d prints so i simply design a three millimeter hole uh, into the print and then when you because of the tolerances involved, it, there's just enough for the, the screw. And if the screw's long enough, you get really good grip on there. If you've got like a short one, it's likely to thread over time. But long ones, uh, they seem to work fine. So that's the back piece added to it. Then we have a little bottom piece. I haven't actually printed this out um, on my, my design. This was just to sort of finish it and have everything enclosed. So this part I called the bottom piece because it's on the bottom of the design. And again, that attaches with four M3 screws. And it just kind of encloses the battery compartment. Next, we have the um, the LiPo charge, and we'll have a look at where I got this from. I think it was the company called DIY More who provide who produced this, uh, and I bought this quite a while ago for uh, another project, which was the Raspberry Pi Retro Console that I designed. I need to write that one up actually. I've uh, not got that on my uh, things to do. Remind me about that one. <laughs> um, so, um, what else have we got? Um, so yeah, so that provides power to the zero on the screen. <laughs> uh, and then we have the um, the zero so the raspberry pi zero i think this um 
CAD part that I've got on screen here is just the original Raspberry Pi Zero, but it's the exact same dimensions. All the zeros are the same dimensions from a sort of mounting perspective and the 40-pin uh, header. Um, so then this mounts with four M2.5 screws, so they're slightly smaller. That's just the, the standard that Raspberry Pi went with for whatever reason. And I've angled this slightly. So this was part of the design challenge. When I was putting this together, if you think I've got mainly like a, a circle, I could have everything sort of flush on top, or I can have things at an angle to try and optimize where things are on the design. Um, so that we've got the screen, and the screen has these headers that connect to the Raspberry Pi. So depending, so if the Raspberry Pi sort of sat underneath this kind of like here, um, depending on the circle where we have this, um, it might stick out further or not. So there's kind of a bit of moving about on the, the design. And what I tend to do when I'm designing things in Fusion 360, I'll, ha I'll show you in a second the actual design. Um, I'll bring in all the components. I will either model them myself or I'll bring in them from GrabCAD and then I'll just move them around on the on the screen so I can sort of see what the shape will look like. Uh, to, be, to begin with, I will literally just slap things on um, my arm to see where things fit and see if uh, that works well. Okay, so next is the uh, the screen itself. So that this is the Hyperpixel 4 from Raspberry Pi, the rectangular version. Uh, and this just sits onto the 40 pin header. And interestingly, it's not um, sort of central. So the header is slightly to one side. Um, so if you drew a center line down here, this is sort of slightly to the, to the right. So that means that we also have to have the Raspberry Pi slightly off to the right. And again, we can, can model all that up in the CAD to make things look just right. Um, because really we want the screen to be kind of the center of the, the wrist mounted computer. Now the great thing about the Hyperpixel 4 is because it's been around so long, the drivers have been baked into the Raspberry Pi OS, meaning you can just push this on and everything will just work. There's no drivers or kernel things required. It just works straight out the box. So one of the things I quite like about that. Next is the Bluetooth keyboard mount. So this is a special design shape for the, the keyboard that I bought. Um, I think I bought this one from Pimroni, but you probably buy it on Amazon as well. It's a very small Bluetooth keyboard, really nice design to it. Again, this, this um, keyboard mount just screws in with four M3 screws, houses the mini Bluetooth keyboard, and it also encloses the battery compartment as well. Now, if, uh, I can unscrew all this to show you the sort of gubbins inside for real if you want in a minute. Um, this, if in case you're interested, in the, let me know in the, the live chat if you want to see that. Uh, so then we have the, the Bluetooth keyboard itself. So I did model this one up in, um, in Fusion 360 and brought this one in as a part just so I could model the, um, the holder for it and get it just right. And the very first design that I did, one, the one that Alex is holding, um, that one, it didn't really hold on to anything. I literally had to put it in place with like blue tack and I thought I'll have to come back to this and have a much better fitting piece. Um, next is the uh, the Pico and breadboard holder. This was a, a fun piece, thanks Alex. So this is the uh, the original one. So the keyboard would just sort of sit, which way around would it be? Just on here. And there was nothing to sort of hold it in place. I, I was going to design like a little thing to hold it like a little lip, uh, but that didn't really work out. It wasn't really, wasn't gonna really survive being sort of moving around my arms, flailing about and so on. So it needs to be sort of either magnetically held on or uh, super glued in place to something else. So yes, the, the Pico and breadboard holder was just a fun addition. It was something a bit of an afterthought, but I thought this would be really fun to do. It can house a Raspberry Pi Pico or Pico W. The mini breadboard means that we can do little experiments for little flashy LEDs or temperature sense stuff, whatever we want to do uh, while we're out in the field. And I just thought that'd be a fun thing to, to add to it. This um, attaches with two M3 screws uh, just in the side. Now there is a bit of a design flaw on this one. I did I did um, put some um, fillets on these, but wherever you've got things like this and you've got like a really big piece, I'm trying to show like a really big piece and you've got like a little piece, the lead, the sort of, yeah, the leverage that will happen there will crack and snap those pieces on the end unless they're really thick or really well secured. So what I need to do is just make them a bit thicker um, and give them a lot more strength on the part. So lots more fillet rather than just being a little piece that's stuck on the top that can easily wiggle off. That's what's happened. <laughs> 
so this is the full assembly. This is what it looks like pretty much. I printed it in red um, PLA just because that's what I had on my printer. Um, so there's no particular reason for that other than that's what it is. And the back piece is yellow just because it was printed on a different printer with a different color. So the, the intention in the fullness of time is to spray all this black and then like I did with Bubo, spray on some sort of a gold color um, and just uh, make it look a bit retro, a bit old. So yeah, we're gonna add some foam in there. It says, um, a bit of comfort and to make the whole thing fit nicely but there you go that's what it looks like okay so the electronics the battery charger the screen the keyboard and the pile let's have a quick look at these so this charger is from uh, diy more if you go to diymore.cc i think it is um it's a, a dual 18650 battery shield as they call it it says uh, be careful which way around you put your batteries in there if you put them the wrong way you'll get to lots of magic smoke i suspect uh, there's a lot of energy that can be stored in an 18650 but so seriously do watch that uh, and unlike um like an aa battery they don't have a, an obvious orientation it is just down to the markings they're sort of capped at both ends are flat um, so it does have a long run time this uh, this also has on the very top there you can see there's all these there's four five volt ground five volt ground uh, connectors on there so that's what we can connect up to the pico we just have a little solder wire um, through the, the design to to expose that outside and then on the bottom there we have three volts as well three volt grounds we have another four of them uh, in fact five of them and then there's also a um, a switch there i think you can switch between um it says on or off but i'm not sure if that's actually an on or off there's actually a button you can press and that kind of shows you on the back um there's a little led that shows you like five leds for the amount of charge that's available um, and there's a couple of connectors on the back as well there's a micro uh, micro b usb connector and there's also a usb c connector for charging and then on the other side which is this one here we have this uh, great big usb a output and that's what's connecting up it kind of goes out and then back in to the uh to the um raspberry pi um so that's just kind of how that works Next we have the Hyperpixel 4, so this is an 800 by 480 resolution uh, display. All the drivers, like I said, are built into Raspberry Pi OS, so you connect this up, switch on your Pi, and it will just work. You may want to play around with the rotation of this. I think you just set the rotation equals 1 or rotation equals 0 up to 3. You can get it, get it to sort of rotate all the different orientations uh, 90 degrees at a time, uh, and it's pretty easy to do that. These displays are really bright, really fast. I think it's 60 frames per second, so they're uh, really quick. Uh, and it simply just pushes on to the uh, the Raspberry Pi's 40 pin headers. So um, if you're using them from anything else, obviously this will take up all the pins on there. Some people said, why not use like a um, the display, the DSi connector? Um, I just have these and these work really well, so I'm happy with these as a solution. Uh, mine is the non-touch version. There's versions that have this little extra connector on it and it has like a touch surface so you can actually sort of touch on your thing. That'd be quite cool to uh, have. The ones I bought are all non-touch variety just because they're a little bit cheaper. They're quite well priced as well, the displays. And then this is the mini, um, mini Bluetooth keyboard that I bought. So I bought this one from Pimroni from their store it wasn't very expensive uh, it's bluetooth it's got its own built-in battery you can power it, you can uh, charge it up with like a micro usb cable uh, it's very simple to use very very tiny very lightweight and just does exactly what we need to be uh, to be to be done i don't know where the tab function is on this i'm sure it will have one but i've not been able to find it it has got these other like www.buttons.com email um, and two function keys, but I'm not sure the, the tab function is. Normally it would be sort of around here. So yeah, I'm not sure what to do there or how to maybe reprogram some of these. I've not looked into that yet. I don't tend to use tab too much, but it might be something that's uh, required. Okay, and then we have the Raspberry Pi Zero 2W. So I have a whole bunch of Raspberry Pis from my Raspberry Pi cluster uh, that I've um, I've got in a little box up there. So I'm going to basically take out one of them, make sure it's got the 40 pin header soldered on, and then we can use that. So currently in there is just the Raspberry Pi sort of the second generation one. I don't know if they call it the two, but it's the second generation one. But it hasn't got this uh, this shield on the top. The Wi-Fi and the Bluetooth are just sort of raw on the on the top of the, the device. And um, I think it's a slightly slower process than the one I'm currently using, but this is the one I will use on it. Runs Raspberry Pi OS, really, really small form factor on it, so it's perfect for wearable tech. It's pretty low power. Um, obviously not as low power as a, a Pico, 
but it's still pretty low power compared to like the full Raspberry Pi 4. So, um, if you want to learn more about um, robotics, Raspberry Pi, stuff like that, I've put a whole bunch of resources on kevsrobots.com. If you go to kevsrobots.com slash learn, you can look at the learning system on there. There's a whole bunch of courses which are all free, um, which is, uh, if you want to learn more about programming, go there. Okay, let's have a bit of a demo, shall we? So, I'm just going to go over to my main camera, um, and let me go to the overhead. Here we go. Let me just move my microphone over here as well. So this is the uh, the the unit. You can see we have the the armhole, which uh, works very nicely there. I've got a whole bunch of screws, and currently, if I just look on the back there, I can see just inside there's sort of a glowing LED from the other side. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this apart just to show you what's inside. So I've just got my uh, Fixit screwdrivers. Quickly unscrew the keyboard. Now what I could do is I could have re-engineered this slightly so that I don't have to unscrew this. You can just pop out the keyboard here, um, but I've not done that yet. Um, I'm also suspecting that this piece is going to snap. You can see how it's wiggling there. It's held on by literally a thread there. And I'll show you why that was. I just need to do that one a little bit more. There we go. So inside here, I get that to sort of zoom properly. Let's see if we can get that in place there. So you can see the Raspberry Pi is just here. We have this uh, charging thing. I've, I'm literally just charging it up by this cable at the moment. I think there should be enough in there now. And yeah, they're pretty, pretty toasty, them batteries. And you might just be able to see just in there those um, LED lights. So you've got this, this on off switch here. And there's another button in here which kind of does the charge. And simply plugging this cable in here powers the the Raspberry Pi. I've got quite a long cable all wrapped up in here so if I just pull the power on this you just unplug the uh, uh, the Raspberry Pi and if I get this display and if I push this into place making sure of course all the header pins uh, connect up okay. I might need to move the frame ever so slightly because I've, I've designed this to be a really good fit so let me just uh, do this Try to do this and show you at the same time. Just need to get it onto the correct pin. So there we go. Yeah, what I'll probably have to do is just take the frame off. So I've designed this frame that this can be removed as well. I've partially done this before the show. So how long before I drop something, do we think? Okay, there we go. These are pretty long screws on here as well. Right, there we go, that's moved out of the way. So let me see, that should be fine. So if I now get this uh, screen, I can be able to, there we go, I drop something. the screen so it's fine right let's get this uh, connected up I wouldn't normally pull off the the screen to charge it up um, I need to put in like a little connector there there we go right so we can now put the, the screen back into place I'm gonna leave this connected up which is just uh, going to the keyboard and mouse that's over here just in case I want to do something with that because it's, it's a pain to undo this just to plug in the keyboard and mouse and what I'll probably do is just screw in two diagonal screws for now, just for speed. There we go. And we'll plug this back in. And we'll get the Raspberry Pi sort of bursting into life. And we should see the, the thing come on the screen in a second. And if I just uh, manoeuvre them in place, we can also get the, uh, the keyboard to screw back on. So, let's just do that one as well.
Um, in a couple of seconds time we'll see on the display um, it should burst into life I can see that it's backlit there we go I can see that the Raspberry Pi logo has started up so by the time I screw this in it should be nearly at the desktop okay so I don't know if you can see there there's this weird kind of effect that happens on this display and it's really just um, a bit of a fault I think there must be a dry capacitor or something's not quite connected but it does work fine just a bit of ghosting on it so I'm just waiting for that to complete there we go so it's popped up with the VNC and it's just going to refresh the background so we'll see the background come on now okay there we go and the keyboard should already be paired as well so if I uh, let's see if I can get this to uh, to show you without the uh, thing so if I put my arm through there you can see now that this is sort of mounted onto my arm let's zoom back a bit there we go so we can see that this is uh, mounted on my arm I'm kind of holding it at the moment just a little bit just because I haven't got any cushioning in here now the reason that this snapped off is because my arm is actually pushing that out a bit and it put too much pressure on these little points so that's probably going to fall off uh, in a minute but I don't need to wear this just to show you this so you can see there we've got the the full terminal I'm just going to cheat by just using my mouse for a second just to open up a normal console terminal there so just wait for that to load these Raspberry Pi the original ones with Wi-Fi are a little bit slow so we can see now we've got a, a terminal loaded there uh, let me just see if I can uh, get this to, it should automatically be paired. Uh, there we go, it has, so if I just delete, so if I just type in, um, let me see, um, Python, Python 3, like so, and then Python 3, and then return, pressing all the wrong buttons here. There we go, that's the return. So we're now in Python and we can now write some programs. So rather than just sort of showing you that, I could actually just console onto this. But uh, yes, that's uh, essentially how this thing will work. We've got uh, a full... Somebody did mention how can you see what you type in because, the, you know, these are at almost a 45 degree angle, not quite. Um, this, the display is angled so that you can uh, you can see it quite easily. So if I, as I'm looking at that, I can see what's uh, on there. What's quite difficult for me to show you on here see if I can get this to zoom in um, it's quite difficult to get it to zoom in there we go and show the actual console so that kind of moire effect that's just because of the frame rate of the camera and the frame rate of the LCD just sort of clashing a little bit but I can type stuff in here like uh, a where's it equals sign on this there it is so equals one and then I can do a is one so you can see that I could program in Python if I really wanted to and we've got the full um, web browser on as well I wonder about what to do about um, a mouse for this because I haven't got a mouse built in I could probably get a Bluetooth mouse or uh, I've, I've actually got um, go back over to me for a second I have actually got like a, a presenters um, go for like doing PowerPoints and you can hold it it's got kind of a mouse I have got one of those I could pair that with it and that would work fine as well so um, that's the, the console itself. I'm not sure how long it will last on the batteries, but I think it's over an hour, uh, easily over an hour. And uh, what I probably just need to do is just have a wire so it's easier to charge up, so I don't have to sort of take the whole thing apart just to charge stuff up. Uh, and I've simply just used the uh, this uh, iFixit screwdriver with these uh, little hexagon nuts on there. They seem to be quite a nice and tidy way of uh, uh, screwing everything together. Okay, let's get back to our keynote and uh, see what else so yeah if you're not joined our discord server you can do that by heading over to kevsrobots.com slash discord we've got a growing community of people on there i do try and dip in uh, when i can but i tend to be focused quite a lot on the project so just when i have a moment i can do that um what else we've got yes yeah, so if you've not followed me on social media um 
we've hit a couple of milestones recently so we hit over 15,000 subscribers at the beginning of this month we're actually on course to hit 16,000 very shortly I think that'll just be uh, towards the end of this month um, and on TikTok um, you can get me at Kevin McAleer 6 on TikTok I do post up little videos um, from time to time on there uh, on Instagram which I do post quite a lot of video clips and um, uh, pictures <laughs> so I'm at Kevin McAleer on there and on Twitter which is probably where I spend most of the time I'm at Kev's Mac I'm also on Mastodon Social and when I remember I will also cross post to Mastodon Social so you can get me at Kev's Mac at Mastodon Social on there too so yeah the the milestone that we hit uh, just yesterday I think it was or, or the day before Friday Friday Saturday morning was 1 million views so we hit 1 million views on YouTube which is insane that's a a million times people have looked at my videos and they say they've enjoyed it but it certainly means that they've seen it and clicked on it a million times which is a which is just an insane number i think um, if you want to support the show you can do this in a number of different ways if you enjoy the projects i do and you want to help um, help me make more of these things because they can be quite costly to, to put together some of these things as you can imagine um, you can do that in a number of different ways so you can uh, do a super thanks if you're watching this on the replay um, so i think on the bottom of the youtube player there's a little um thanks button you can press that and uh, buy me a coffee if you want on there there's also the uh, the super chat which is the um if you're watching this live you can do a super chat and that will pop up on the screen i'll make sure all that's enabled now so we can yep so we've got the stream elements on there so that's all switched on now and if you want to buy me a physical coffee you can go over to kev's mac sorry kevsrobots.com slash coffee uh, Kev's Mac's a really old website, I don't even think I'm using that one now. Kevsrobots.com slash coffee and you can uh, buy me a physical coffee there. And if you want to join the YouTube membership program, that's also an option too. Um, and you just click on the little join button underneath, I think after you've subscribed. Uh, and you can also just like this, that costs you nothing. And of course we've got our supporters, so um, let me click the button there. So this is our robot overlord army. <laughs> So we've got a number of different supporters there. We've got uh, Marin, we've got Victor, we've got Roland, Marcus, uh, Braun, SL, we've got Carol. And then our members, uh, this is the uh, Buy Me A Coffee members. We have uh, Marlene Brent, we have John, we have Tom, we have Keith, Shemi and Steve. Hey to everybody who's watching live as well. Uh, and then YouTube members, so we have Carol, we have... Um, uh, is it Jose? Somebody said I have to pronounce it. I would say Jose. 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 Uh, we have Vidal. We have Skipper Banks. Jeff Ford. We have WP Body. Bill Hoy. We have uh, Hans from Cheerlights. We have Michael. We have Frazier. We have John Paul. And we have Tom as well. So thank you everybody who supported the show so far. You guys are awesome. Okay, so I think that's everything I wanted to show you on the... Um, the, the, the main content for the video. So this is the point of the video where I'll say thank you so much for watching and I shall see you next time.